You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Mohamed Shaban. Good evening. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a meeting with Egypt's Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research and Acting Minister of Health and Population Dr. Khaled Abdul Ghaffar in Cairo. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed the strategies of work in the health system in both countries and the pioneering experiences that have been achieved in order to provide the best medical care for citizens of both countries. They also discussed expanding horizons of cooperation between the health sectors of the two nations with regards to medical devices and supplies in addition to the provision of medicines. The President of the Supreme Council of Health and the accompanying delegation also visited the activities of the first African Medical Conference, Health of Africa, lauding its sponsorship, participation and organization. He also met a number of major drug manufacturers and discussed with them ways to enhance drug cooperation with Egypt's pharmaceutical companies. His Majesty the King's advisor for diplomatic affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, has affirmed that the consolidation of values of coexistence and peace among countries and people, as well as the support for dialogue aimed at achieving rapprochement and mutual understanding, are among the most important priorities and pillars of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's policies. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed also commended the unwavering interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in establishing joint action and collective cooperation based on the respect of pluralism, communication and fruitful openness to various peoples and culture. While addressing the opening session of Tangier Dialogue hosted by Morocco, with the participation of senior officials and decision makers from the region and many countries all over the world, His Majesty the King's advisor asserted that Bahrain and Morocco have for several centuries agreed on a well-established wise policy based on equality and rights and duties among their people, as well as non-discrimination against any religion, ethnicity and intellectual grounds among the members of their societies. They also work together to enhance security, peace and stability in the region by spreading the culture of coexistence, dialogue and understanding as basic principles of joint action, adding that they seek to foster rapprochement and communication among the countries of the region in a way that would benefit everyone and meet the aspirations of people for their progress and prosperity. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed reviewed Bahrain's landmark achievements in passing laws and legislation that support social coexistence and protect it from anything that would affect its deep-rooted heritage. He indicated that promoting the values of coexistence, dialogue and openness are essential pillars of his mad seeking Hamad's reform project and one of the most important features of the authentic Bahraini identity as confirmed by the National Action Charter and the Constitution. His Majesty the King's advisor extended sincere thanks to the Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates, Nasser Borita, and also those in charge of the dialogue, wishing the participants every success in achieving the goals of the event, namely the consolidation of the culture of peace, coexistence and dialogue among all countries and societies. A joint meeting was held between the Ministry of Housing and the Housing Bank with the United Nations Office for Human Settlement in the Kingdom of Bahrain to discuss developing cooperation opportunities with the UN program during the next stage. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Ya'goub al hamar confirmed that the government has put into its consideration the importance of providing the elements of quality of life in Bahrain's housing projects by paying attention to the planning aspect which set advanced standards for housing unit designs to meet the basic needs of Bahraini families. The Minister of Housing said that Bahrain's housing cities are compatible with the requirements of implementing the 11th goal of the Sustainable Development Goals 2030, which stipulate making cities inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Al Hamar added that the government, head by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is keen on cooperating with the United Nations Human Settlement Program and following up on the implementation of the Development Goals. During the meeting, the recently implemented joint projects were reviewed, mainly the completion of the preparation of the second voluntary national report for Bahrain, which was submitted to the United Nations and reviewed by the Minister of Housing during his participation in the high-level political forum held at the United Nations headquarters in New York during April. Hope Projects, the investment arm of the Hope Fund, held its board meeting online via video conference. Youth and Sports Affairs Minister Ayman bin Tawfiq al muayyad chaired the virtual sessions and praised members' efforts to implement Hope Projects initiatives and programs. He stressed the importance of supporting Bahraini youth and promoting their projects among investors and stakeholders. The session discussed the topics on the meeting agenda, endorsed minutes of the previous meeting, approved administrative and financial data, as well as the project's plan, performance indications, and the 2022 budget. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its preparations for the Hajj session this year by providing all means to facilitate the pilgrims and ensure that they perform their rituals with ease. As part of these preparations, the registration of pilgrims in the Bahraini campaigns has been completed as the number of pilgrims in the Kingdom for this season is 2,094 divided on 59 campaigns. The Kingdom's mission has earlier decided to merge at least five campaigns with each other, giving them the responsibility of the management and negotiation with the concerned authorities, whether in Bahrain or Saudi Arabia. The Higher Committee for Hajj and Umrah Affairs and the Kingdom of Bahrain's Hajj mission have earlier decided on the obligatory merge of campaigns in order to improve services provided to pilgrims and maintain Hajj prices for this year in light of the reduction in numbers. The Hajj mission also decided that there is no permit for those who are 65 years old or above. France and the Kingdom of Bahrain celebrated 50 years of diplomatic relations by hosting a press conference on the frigate Lafayette Sakoff, a French military ship in the Kingdom. More on this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. France and Bahrain celebrated 50 years of diplomatic relations by hosting the first post-COVID reception on an icon of the French Navy, the Lafayette Sorcouf military ship, paying tribute to the long friendship between the countries and highlighting Bahrain's openness to the world, which has been further strengthened over the past 50 years. 50 years ago, France was among the first country to uh, establish diplomatic relations with, uh, with Bahrain and we are very proud of this and we wanted to celebrate and uh, with this ship, La Frégate Surcouf, I think it's a good opportunity to, to celebrate uh, again this anniversary. So today is a great day. It is the first time since my arrival in Bahrain in 2019 that we are able to go on board of a French uh, warship and also to host some uh, friends from Bahrain. So it's, and it's due to the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic relation between our two countries. So it's an historic uh, time. The ceremony magnifies the fruitful military cooperation between Bahrain and France and its involvement in contributing towards the objectives of fulfilling the role of being the strategic compass for security and defense. Very pleased to be in, uh, in Manama and Bahrain uh, today. Uh, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to uh, share with the French Embassy the opportunity to uh, celebrate the friendship between Bahrain and France. Uh, so I'm currently uh, doing a mission in the, in the, in the Gulf. Uh, so as I already said, so we're uh, doing a mission, a European mission uh, called MSO that contributes to uh, safe navigation environment in the region. And so uh, we patrol in the region, but we also have the opportunity to make some port visit and to support uh, so our uh, diplomatic um, diplomatic uh, service and to uh, uh, to work uh, the, uh, to improve the, the relations between the France and all the countries our allies in the region. The stopover mission celebrated the special bonds of friendship that have linked the French Republic and the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is also symbolic of the cooperation, solidarity and relations of trust that unite the two countries. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC in South Korea, concluded the fifth round of negotiations on a free trade agreement in FTA in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The two sides launched their negotiations on June the 6th, during which they tackled many topics aimed at increasing the flow of intra-trade, boosting investments and opening global markets to the exports of the GCC member states. General Coordinator of Negotiations and Head of the GCC Negotiating Team, Abdurrahman bin Ahmed al-Harbi, stated that such agreements are in line with the directives of the leaders of the GCC member states that aim at strengthening the position of the Council and supporting its strategic relations with its partners around the world. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has provided a grant worth 30 million U.S. dollars to support the Afghanistan Humanitarian Trust Fund. The grant to the fund, which works under the umbrella of the Islamic Development Bank in coordination with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, falls within the context of the Kingdom's humanitarian and relief efforts to brotherly and friendly nations. It aims to help mitigate the suffering of the people of Afghanistan, limit any further deterioration of the humanitarian situation, and prevent any possible economic collapse, a collapse that could potentially impact regional and international stability and peace. 
The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia welcomed the International Atomic Energy Agency's resolution criticizing Iran for not fully answering the watchdog's questions on uranium traces at undeclared sites. The Saudi Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that the Kingdom welcomes the IAEA's Border Governor's resolution, which stresses that Iran must comply with its obligations under the Safeguards Agreement and the necessity of its cooperation to resolve all outstanding nuclear issues. The Saudi Foreign Ministry also called on Iran to cooperate with the IAEA and to resolve all outstanding issues without stalling. Egypt submitted a draft resolution to the World Trade Organization to strengthen its response to food security challenges in net food importing developing countries and least developed countries, the LDCs. The Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that the draft resolution is set to be discussed during the 12th Ministerial Conference of the WTO that will be convened at the organization's headquarters in Geneva on the 12th to the 15th of June. Ahmed Ihab Gamaluddin, the permanent representative of Egypt to the UN office at Geneva, said Egypt submitted the resolution on behalf of the Arab and African groups and the LDCs after intensive consultations with member states.